Hello and welcome back. Today I want to share my results of a four hour multimeter stability test I did yesterday. We all know that multimeters need some time to warm up. Some uh, suppliers say 30 minutes, some say 60, some say 90. You can find that in the specifications. But what I like to know is, is that also true? And how stable are they then? I'm running this test on a few of my 6.5 digit multimeters. That is the Sickland uh, STM3065X. I'm doing that on the Instec, GW Instec GDM9061 and on my Keatley DMM6500. And I have two second hands HP Agilent. Uh, 34401A, very popular, also second hand. You can usually get this very nicely priced, I think around 350 if you look in eBay. And if you're lucky and the calibration is good, they could be nice. So I'm also taking those in the test. Before I take you to my process, how I did the warm up, how I started, how I was sure that not some of my multimeters were already in standby, so then it's kind of an unfair heated test what I did. I have some thermal footage also that I will share with you. In the comments I get a lot of questions also from people that just started or they need to make a decision what multimeter to buy. So that's why this test is also very interesting. Some questions are kind of easy. They are doubting how do I need to buy a four and a half, five and a half or six and a half. Well usually I say that well if you're doubting between four and a half and six and a half maybe you should start first with a 4.5 or a 5.5 and then find out if you need more or not because buying a 6.5 you need to know a little bit more and it needs to be stable because apparently that last digit is important so having a stable meter is then important so that's why this test is also interesting because you can buy the sequence for around 800 850 maybe the GW Instec I have here the 9061 I think it's around 1100 and the Keatley, it's very famous, the DMM6500. They started, I think, an introduction around 1200, but I think they are now already around 1500, 1600. So deciding between those two, you really want to know if they are good or not. So how was my process? How did I conduct the test? Well, my lab is completely switched off. I have a main switch except for my heater ventilation system that you can hear in the background and my GPSDO. And I have an extra power socket here. This is permanent power, which I usually of course don't have here because when I leave here, I want to be sure everything is switched off. I needed some sort of voltage reference that was super stable. So I have here my DMM check plus. It's the Ref8, Revision 8 with external power so I also knew when I do four hours of test the battery is not slowly draining. That one of course is connected to permanent power. This one I heated up I think I started at uh, four in the afternoon 1600 and I heated it up for an hour and I have thermal pictures of that and also you can see that the lab was switched off. After I made the thermal picture, I thought, okay, I need something to show a clock. And because here is only the temperature, you can see that also in the time uh, lab, because I wanted to try to keep the temperature in the lab, not more than one degree up and down. And it's kind of difficult, I don't have air conditioning. So when it became hot, I just tried to open a little bit the window without uh, creating a breeze because of course that will also disturb so I but I managed to keep it within uh, one degree so after the hour passed the DMM check plus was nightly heated they say even half an hour but I did an hour just to be sure and also it's nice to have the whole hour on the clock when you watch the time lapse and then I switched on the main power of the lab. So if some multimeters had some sort of standby, it would be activated then. I switched all the multimeters on and I checked the time on the laptop. It has been an hour for the DMM check plus to heat up. I just switched on the lab uh, power. We can see all the lights now, they are on. 
I will switch the Well, you might think maybe you have an impedance problem because you have five millimeters in parallel. So instead of 10 meg, you will have two max. But this one still should work fine, even if you connect one mega ohm and we are doing two. Still, the readout will be a little bit lower, but it doesn't change during the measurements. So we're not going to look for the exact value. We're only going to look how much it changed. And yeah, we kind of uh, assume that this one is stable after one hour. Everything is in parallel, you can see here, but you could say, yeah, the last one gets a little bit less. Well, one connection here from the DM plus is in the bottom and here it is in the top. So if something gets a little bit fractional less, but it's hardly possible with these high impedances, it will be the ones here in the middle. So I don't think that will be an issue. I decided to do my actual test after two minutes. After two minutes it was switched on because in the first two minutes it's all jumps and it's kind of a useless what you see there. And then after 32 minutes, that is my 30 minutes point. And for 60 minutes, I just took 60 minutes. Those two minutes don't matter too much anymore. And then of course I did tests every half hour with the time lapse. I will show you that. We are at 30 minutes. It seems like most of the multimeters have stabilized. I see that uh, Edulance didn't move too much, maybe one count. I see the Kidley is still deciding if he wants to go one count up or not. Now I see that uh, Instec suddenly went one up, but they are all around this 6563. Only the, the Sigland needs a little bit more time. Well, after an hour, we could already see that some of the multimeters have stabilized and some have not. An uh, interesting point to notice, and it's not good or bad, it's just how it is constructed. But you could see that the uh, Sigland is going slowly going down in value, while all the other multimeters are slowly going up. And then here are the results. I also made some uh, still pictures in between of the time lapse. And uh, well, as explained, I started here with the, with the two minutes. We were at 21.8 when we started. And when we ended four hours later, we were only one degree higher. So I think we managed to do that well. I also specified the time, how long it takes for heat up. According to the manuals I found, and well, we can see some difference here. It's 60 minutes, 30 minutes, 90 minutes, 120, 120 for the boat here. And then I just wrote down the values. Having these absolute values just written off the display, I can also try to do some deltas. The delta, this one is compared to the start. So from uh, the two minutes all the way up to the 32 minutes in this case, it was a delta of uh, that's 20 microvolts. And so we went up. I did that for all the multimeters. And you see here it is going up. And we can see here it is actually going down with kind of big steps. And well, the same here and the same here. This total delta is nice to see. Okay, the device is probably warmed up because from the start until now, we don't see any big jumps anymore. But stability is also, when it is warm, does it is it able to stay at that value? So I also wanted the delta between 30 and 60, 60 and 90, 90, 120, and so on. And then I also wanted to rate it. So if it didn't change, if, if there is no data, it will be a zero. I will give it a positive point. If it changed more than the last digit, so that is uh, 10 microvolt, like here, I give it a minus point. But you can see already, this is not bold. So here, 
I did it uh, two calculations, one just from the start and one when the supplier thinks the device is warm. So here, um, that would be 60 minutes. So this is uh, within the 60 minutes, so I don't count it. This plus point I also don't count because it was within the 60 minutes. Well, I did the same for all the others and then we have points. So I did cold points, that is here. We kind of have the rating of the device and when the supplier say it's warm. And this is also nice because if we look at this table, and now I can see the a little color change by the way, uh, here are thick points. And the supplier said here it's warm. Now here it started to be this one was warm. Well, I kind of agree because it's only one count here. And here it says it started to be warm from here because this one is in 30 minutes. Well, I kind of agree. Here it said one and a half hour, but here we have still big change, big change. Here not, here it starts to stabilize. I would actually say maybe it is more like three hours before it's really warm because here we can see that it is starting to stabilize. Here also, this is the second and uh, the Agilent. Here they say about two hours, but we can see this one is not ready yet. So this one is maybe, okay, 150 minutes. And this one was within the two hours. Now I put it in a different uh, list with the points that I give. You can give it on the plus and the minus combined. And then we end up, well, we can see the points here. Cold is kind of useless, I think. We should look at the warm uh, column here. And then this one comes first. Well, it's the most expensive. The second hands are, by the way, doing quite good in this test. And then we have the uh, GW in stack and the cyclant here. What if you only count positive points and you forget about the negative points? Well, we kind of have the same order. And if we only count the negative points, this is so here when we have the big jumps. Um, yeah, we sort of have the same order here. These two second hands are in between, but as I said, it is depends so much on what you get from the seller. So we kind of need to take those out. And maybe you think that it is not fairly done the test because some can have ventilation here is all in a stack and these ones are in the open. Well, I put my laptop on top just to create a little bit more heat if any comes from it. There are no ventilation holes here, but also these are second hand. So in the end, it doesn't matter too much because it just depends what you get from the second hand uh, seller. In my case, I was quite lucky, I think. So when we look at temperature stability, is it really a surprise? Well, for me, not really. The good thing is that I never realized that the cyclant was actually much more stable than I thought. It only takes about three hours, but then it's just as stable as the others. But uh, yeah, the order is the, the Keatley, which is the most expensive. Then the one in the middle price is in the middle. And then the, the cheaper or less expensive multimeter is in the third place. So as always, you get what you pay for. Of course, this is not the only thing you look at when buying a multimeter because uh, like the Keatley also has very fast sampling. It's crazy fast. It has all kinds of graphical functions. It's almost like an oscilloscope. This one has uh, these and this one also have very nice uh, functions, but it is just not that high resolution and uh, the scan is a little bit lower. So that is also things that you might want to look at and connectivity to the computer maybe or other automatization stuff. So that were the results of my test. I hope it was helpful. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you next time. If you were wondering what is the DMM Check Plus, it is uh, this device. I leave some links in the bottom with uh, discounts. It is a great device for testing your multimeter with the uh, capacitors, resistors, and coils and a DC voltage, AC voltage, and some current. I have a video of that as well. The thermal images were made with the uh, P2 Pro from Thermal Master. I will have a video of this later.